56. Okay. And uh, when did you enlist in the Navy? Uh, 1982. I was 18 years old okay. at the time. And what was your inspiration for joining the Navy? Uh, I wanted to travel the world. I, I just, I, I used to see the brochures and all that. And uh, I had an uncle that was in the Navy. And he used to talk about it to me and my brothers. And he just said it was a good thing, you know, a real good thing. But I really wanted to travel. I, I used to like those commercials I saw on TV about the travel and all that. And just be, you know, so yes, that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to go places and do things. And you got paid for it. So that was a good thing for me. Uh, so, where'd you go to boot camp? Orlando, Florida. I joined the Navy in uh, Decatur, Georgia, at South, Deca South DeKalb Mall at the time. I don't remember my recruiter's name, but I remember the whole process. And it was very good. Ironic, I joined the, uh, I was in the delay entry program. So, I joined in January, I believe, but my billet wouldn't be available until maybe uh, March 31st. But to make a long story short, I ended up going to boot camp and all that April 1st, <laughs> April Fool's Day. So that was just always, it's just kind of like a gimme, like when, when was your first day in the Navy officially? April Fool's Day. So it's kind of like a little joke. Uh, anything you remember from um, boot camp? Hell yeah, definitely a lot of it. I remember everything. I remember us, uh, uh, actually, it was one of my first plane rides in my life, uh, first time I ever flown. They flown as a commercial from Atlanta to Orlando, Florida. And uh, we had other guys, I forgot what they were called, but they were other service members that were coming back into the service. So they escorted all the new guys down there. And uh, airport, uh, plane, they fed us and everything. We got to uh, Orlando, Florida late that evening. And I do remember this. I've never been to Florida. So I didn't know how hot and humid it was. So this was before they had the tarmax and all that. This when they had the tarmax. You got off the plane and you were right on the, right outside before you came inside. Got off the plane and uh, just a big heat of, heat wave just rushed me. Like I said, I've never been to Florida. Like, man, it's humid. And that's how, that was my introduction to the Navy. Uh, they put us in the barracks and like at th three or four in the morning, some guy comes in and throws a trash can and waking everybody up. It's, of course, it's still dark outside. And I'm like, man, no, nah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, they didn't tell us about this. They didn't, they didn't warn us about this. But that's how I remember my introduction to the Navy. So four in the morning and uh, real hot, very, very hot and stuff like that. Reveille, reveille. I, I, you never forget those words. And I remember my first uh, first COs. I remember their, their uh, hard grades and waters, company commanders. And, uh, you know, that's what I remember the first time. Uh, there's like the Navy equivalent drill sergeant. Yes, yeah, they were they were called company commanders, though. Okay. Yes. They were, uh, they were E6, E7, on above, you know, up like that. At least Petty Officer First Class, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When I was in the Army, they didn't use trash cans, they used airplanes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it probably has changed over the years. I'm, I'm sure it has, but it, it made a real distinctive sound. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And then uh, it was a 80 of us, I guess. That's what they combined a the unit. I don't know what they call that in the Army, 80 guys or more. That would be a platoon. A platoon. So I was our platoon. I remember it was a C-115 because we had T-shirts. Eventually, we had T-shirts. And we were company 115 at that time of the year. So that's what that was our official uh, company number. Okay. Uh, anything else that stands out, like swimming, gas chamber? Or yeah, research? all that. Uh, march, you know, you had to march. You had a lot of march, fold clothes, make a bed. All those things, you know, inspections, personnel inspections, uh, history of the Navy. It was a job. I mean, it started. It was a job from day one. You know, you come in, uh, you wake up, you go. I believe we went to uh, do calisthenics. We ran, 
And then we went to breakfast. Then after breakfast, we came back and we went to class for a few hours. We did personnel inspections. I remember marching a lot, called it a grinder. Big old parking lot, you know, and just marched and marched and all that kind of stuff. Cadence. I learned cadence. Uh, I learned a whole lot of things. A whole lot of things. All right, so anything else about this stuff before we transition to graduation? No, that's that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, did you go to A school after this? No, I was uh, I was considered a OJT, so I was yeah OJT. I qualified for a few schools, but I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Okay. So that's when they had a, a OJT. You were good on ship, and then you would strike out. We called it striking out at the time, and you picked your your field. If you required a school, they would go back and pull your ASVAB scores. If you qualified and they had availability, and then, and two, the ship's need, whatever your commands need, wherever they was, you know, was, was needed, that's where you would go based on your qualifications. I qualified for radio man, but I didn't sure, I wasn't quite sure I wanted to be one. So I waited till I got on a ship to strike out. Uh, just for historical record, OJT means on the job training. Okay. And just for whoever may be watching this. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what happened after that? Did you go to the Caribbean? Uh, no. After graduating, we gra I graduated. I think it was boot camp was, it was eight to nine weeks, something like that. I graduated, and then uh, most of the guys separated. Some went to A school, B school, whatever. Since I was OJT, I went to apprenticeship training. Basically, just deck seamanship, basics of deck seamanship. Okay. That lasted maybe about, maybe maybe a month. Maybe a month. And then you were assigned to a ship after that. And then that's, uh, that's after graduation. You graduated, and then you went to OJT. And then you were assigned to a ship. Okay. And I got assigned to the USS New Jersey okay. after that. And you first saw the ship during the commission ceremony? No, no. Uh, the time that actually the, the U.S. New Jersey was in Bremerton, Washington, at the time, okay. so it hadn't. It was still in a dry dock, so they they were still working on the ship okay. and everything, and uh, so that's where they put us up at. That's where you would go go, stayed in a barracks, a barge, and all of that. And then and eventually the ship would come down to the USS, uh, come down to Long Beach. Okay. Then you go to Long Beach, and that's another shipyard. But it wasn't in dry dock. It was actually on the water, and they were preparing it. And then you ended up going to be stationed in basically in San Diego after all was said and done. Right. So we coming from from uh, Northwest all the way down to Southern California. Okay. So you got to see the ship. I got to see the ship. By the time uh, July, I remember going. To, uh, I remember uh, going to get my orders. My orders was a report. July, like July 9th of that year. I was supposed to go to Bremerton, Washington, but by that time, it, they didn't finish up the work in Bremerton and made it on down to Long Beach. So I ended up going to Long Beach, and that's when I first saw the ship. It was, uh, it was like I said, a ship in the yards. It wasn't painted. It was, it, it didn't look like the ship, of course, it'd be kind, you know, but they were working on it. Okay. So that was my first time seeing it. Uh, what was your impression when you first saw the ship? Uh, well, you know, I didn't have any experience, so I wouldn't know what a ship was supposed to really look like. I just knew there was a whole lot of equipment on there, and it was more civilians on there than, than Navy personnel. Matter of fact, we didn't even, of course, we didn't live on a ship right off the bat. We lived in barges. But we would come on and work on a ship and do things, but they were, it's like a house, you know, building a house. So it's real junky, a lot of debris, and a lot of things going on. But as you get closer to completing it, the less junkier it looks, the less messy it looks. Mm -hmm. So July, they didn't get the ship ready until oh, five, six months. It took us that. And I remember doing, I mean, they were working on it all the time. Welders, uh, electricians, painters. I mean, they really just re gutted the whole thing. And we did watch. I remember doing watch. That was basically what we did. We did, because uh, they were welding all the time. Everything was being welded. So they called a far watch. So that, that would go on all the time. That was, our that was my first watch, really, official watch. 
to make sure the welders were, you know, everything was being welded because they were civilians. All right. So you basically participated in the, in the New Jersey modification. Yes, they did. Yes. Uh, you remember like the missiles being installed, the new radar being installed? Yeah, I do. I re well, you know, yeah, we. I remember it, but it, it, I didn't have a part. Of, you know, I didn't have a plan. I wouldn't hook it up any radar or anything of that nature. They were all civilians doing that with the missiles and everything. They put the missile launch in, but I, I, of course, they didn't tell you when they go put the missiles on. That, that's very classified. I do remember going to get the, the ammunition. Once we start going doing sea trials, I remember us going to get the ammunition and all that. And then once we got the ammunition on, we called the sea trials. We would go out with the civilians and we would go out for like five or six days and they would test all the equipment. They would just test it and everything. So I remember it. Yeah, I remember it real well. Do you remember any of the, any of the barrels being replaced? The, the what? Any of the gun barrels being replaced? No, I don't remember them being replaced. Because, see, they were, the, the, they were the original turrets, the 16-inch guns. That was all original. So they didn't replace it. They just fixed it and cleaned it out and everything. So I do remember the missile. I remember the projectiles. I remember that really well. Uh, the six, 16 inch, uh, six inch. I do remember them putting uh, the the new Felix system. I mean, we called it RD, RD DD2. That little robot. Uh, RD2. Yeah, that's what they called it. And uh, I remember that. I remember them putting the, the tomahawks on there, the missiles. You know. Installing those, I remember all those things. So uh, yeah, but I remember the missiles though. I mean the, the sixteen inch guns. Yeah. And uh, you were there during the recommission ceremony. Yes, I was. Okay. I was uh, actually I was best cranking. I was uh, I was doing my ninety days crank mess cranking at the time, but I remember real well the day he came on board. It was like on a Tuesday or something like that Tuesday, and I remember all the Secret Service people around. A lot of security, a lot of security around. And I remember the ceremony was happening around, you know, around noon time. I mean, uh, so I didn't get to, I didn't get the man the rails like I would like to have, but I do remember, like I say, uh, all the dignitaries that came on board and all that. I remember, I do remember going up topside, seeing them. It was on TV actually. I remember it was on TV. They, you know, everybody was. Uh, it was the first of the. Uh, I guess the part of Reagan's uh, plan. Of, it was the first battle to be, to be recommissioned. Yeah, I remember that. So I was I was part of that. I, 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 you know, I remember that real fun, fondly. I didn't know how big it was at the time. I'm only I'm 18, 19 years old. Didn't think about too much about it, but it was a big deal though. It was a very big deal. So, and that's what the one of the things they sold. They said it would be uh, the older guys would come in, or instructors would tell us. Any of you guys get to New Jersey, you, you lucked out. You really, because guys were supposed to be waiting in line to get on board in New Jersey. They called it the, uh, oh, I guess instead of the World or Westpac or a Med Cruise or IO, I guess it was the Cruise of the World. You know, you can go anywhere in the world through this ship. They did this the historical ship, and that's what they called it. So. And some of us got lucky and got our orders there, so that's how I got there. So I was, uh, I didn't really know at the time, but I was just, you know, I thought all ships were that way. That's how, that's how I'm thinking about it. My first ship, and I looked out and got on in New Jersey. So that was good, good memories. Good memories. Do you remember seeing President Reagan and Nancy? No, I didn't get to see President Reagan. The highest person I got to actually meet, I got to meet Secretary Lehman at the time. He was the Secretary of uh, Navy at the time. And I actually met him and talked to him. You know, we, I guess we didn't, we, we didn't have the selfies and all that. We didn't take pictures. I didn't take any pictures of him. But I do remember the conversation we had. I was in his chow hall, seeing an apprentice at the time. You know, we waited, you know, in the Navy, you wait on everything. And uh, he was a civilian clothes, of course. And he came down and he spoke to me. I was reading a book in the chow hall. And he asked me the book I was reading. And I told him. And uh, he shook my hand. But, I, you know, if I had known, I would have taken a picture of him. But. Didn't know at the time, and he walked on. He's exactly what I was reading. Uh, I remember the book too. I think it was the, called "The Breaks of the Game." <laughs> so that's what I was reading at the time I met him. But I did not get to see the president though. No.
No, I did not. Okay. And so uh, after the ceremony, uh, did you go to sea trials? Yeah, we went. We started sea trials, did, and everything. And that sea trials lasted. He came in like January of that year, and sea trials lasted until uh, deployment time. Deployment last. Deployment came around in May, I believe. May. That's when the deployment came. So we see we had sea trials for like three months. Every uh, we go up the coast. You know, I, I just fit, and then we dock in San Diego, spend a few days there, and then we go back out to sea trials. And during the sea trials, that's when they tested all the new equipment and old stuff too. So everything's been being put to the test. I didn't mind the sea trials. I, I liked them. It was beautiful. California is beautiful. And at that during that time of the year, it was very nice out there. Very nice. We we liked it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Okay. Okay. January. But, but still beautiful. That's the best. That's the weather wise. That's the greatest place ever, I believe. Anyway, San yeah. Diego. Not Long Beach, but San Diego. So we'll just go there for a while. That, that was nice. That was really nice. A lot of palm trees, I can remember. Yeah, yeah, a lot of palm trees and everything. So, and then the first time, you know, I got a chance to get on a. They called it a. We didn't. We didn't pull up to the actual dock. They would put us out there. We would uh, take the boat back into uh, shore. So we didn't. We didn't actually pull up to the dock. Because they, they were testing everything now because there would be, the way I was told, there would be countries that we couldn't actually dock at. So we would have to, uh, we would have to be outside. And I forgot what the boats they called them. We called them Liberty Boats from the boat to the dock. It'd be about a, maybe a, a couple of miles. We couldn't, we'd be a couple of miles outside. We didn't, we didn't tie up to the pier. So I remember, that was my first experience with that okay. on the USS New Jersey. Uh, so let's talk about uh, every day, everyday life on the ship, like uh, food or entertainment. Uh, anything you remember? Oh, uh, the food was, you know, it was <laughs> three food all the time. Be honest, because you worked, it was always working. You know, people on the ship, you're always working. So, and after even after dinner, you had mid rats. So guys is working twelve midnight all night. If you wanted something to eat, you know, you go down to the deck and they had mid rats. So there was always food available, always food available. Uh, entertainment, nobody was on board like the entertainment. Uh, a lot of guys, you learn to entertain yourself. You know, you learn to entertain yourself. Uh, guys, uh, I did. I, I learned how to play cards because, you know, I learned how to play cards while I was in the Navy really pretty well because you had a lot of downtime. Especially during sea trials, especially during the sea trials, we go to uh, we do ops and you'd be in a compartment with these guys for hours on hours at a time, and you know you waiting on your part to come about, and it, it would take a long time. So guys will have a, a deck of cards, so you start playing cards. Guys read a lot. Uh, guys drew. They read. You know, write a lot. Study. A lot of guys went to school, you know, correspondingly. You did your, uh, you did your BMRs. You did your qualifications and your rate. You know, whatever your rate was, you qualified. And you, so you got a chance. You got a chance to read a lot and do a lot of things. I played. I did all of them. I did a little bit of everything. Did a little bit of everything. So that was good. Food was good. You know, yeah, food was very good. Uh, yeah, food was, it was pretty good. I worked and worked out a lot. We guys would work out a lot. You know, you had a, we had we had a small. We took a small compartment and made a gym out of it, and uh, guys would go down there and work out. The ship was pretty big, big size ship in New Jersey, so you, the guys would run. You know, you run on the outsides of the ship. Uh, there's a part where you could run and jog a little bit and walk. So it was, it was you, can get, you know, and most of the guys are young. You know, so. Lift the weights and everything. You burn off energy pretty much. So that was a good thing. And we had a basketball court. Guys would play basketball out there. So it was good. Is that basketball court in the fairytale? No, it was like midship. Kind of like midship because the fat tail is, you know, you still lose a lot of balls. Still gonna lose some balls, you know. So they put it in midship where, you know, it was more confined and you, you, 
working pie, so it was in the midship, so you wouldn't lose as many basketballs going overboard. Right. Uh, do you remember which level it was on? I want to say like the second level. Okay. It's, like I said, mid, around the second level. It wasn't too high up. It definitely wasn't on the main level, but it was about on the second level. Yeah. And if you can shoot, you know, you might learn how to shoot because the, the ship is, you know, kind of moving a little bit, a little rock here. And <laughs> if you had skills, you would, you would find out. So that was fun. Sounds like it'll be on like the boat deck, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it definitely where it is. The boat deck, where the boats were accommodating the deck, the ladders and all that was stored. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, do you remember any movies on board? Yeah, we had, uh, well, of course you had, you know, you had TV. You had, you know, they had TV. So every, every compartment, every compartment, uh, building compartment had a TV. They would show movies on the on the mess decks, you know, nightly, uh, about nightly around seven thirty, eight o'clock after uh, after chow. Chow would go from five to six. By the time they clean up, clean the chow hall and then the mess decks and all that, they would show a movie from around seven seven to nine most most nights. Uh, good movies, you know, they, they were current movies. They were a lot of them current. They were very current. So, uh, it ranges from comedy to, uh, you know, it's comedy. It wasn't no, now there were no X-rated movies or nothing like that. You, you might get a little R and R, some R movies in here and there, but it was, that's about as far as it went. Okay. As far as it went. Any movie that stands out? Uh, at that time, maybe the movie that may stand out was, uh, we was, uh, now during the rest of my career on the New Jersey was, I can't remember a movie, but during the rest of my career, I remember, uh, Top Gun was out in my latter part of my career on the Virginia. That was, you know, national anthem for us. Top Gun. Entertainers at that time were, uh, you know, on the New Jersey, uh, I wasn't 21, so I, I really wouldn't, couldn't go in the clubs. So okay. The only entertainment I have is the, uh, they call it the, uh, the enlisted club on base in Long Beach, the enlisted club. You could go there, it was, you know, it was okay there, but as far as me going out in town, not that much. I do remember uh, rec, recreational service. The chapter would always have tickets to all the major sports, uh, events. Uh, of course, uh, Long Beach, we had the Dodgers, the Lakers, the Clippers, uh, the Rams. So we would always, you know, there's always availability, always tickets available. And they used to take us, we used to take a van to go to see the Dodgers and the Rams. Not many of the Lakers. The, the Lakers got kind of hard to find, but I did, I actually went up to see the Lakers many a time, many, many, when they were at the forum at the time. I actually met Magic Johnson, not on the ship, but you know, I just on one of my liberties, I would go up to see the Lakers in Inglewood, and I met him that day. Met him while he was practicing for a game. That's before all the security the way it is now. But at one time, you could go to the game, and, and before they actually took the court, walk down to the court, maybe talk to him and, and converse with him a little bit. Remember interacting with him? Yeah, Magic Johnson. I met Magic Johnson. Wow. He spoke to me. We talked about ten minutes. Uh, he asked me what I was doing at for doing out in California. And I told him when I was in the Navy, and I, you know, because I remember him being at Michigan State, and I'm from the a tri-state Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky. So we got to see the Big Ten play. He played in the Big Ten, so and I reminded him of that. And uh, so he just say, hey, how, "How was I? How did I get out to California?" And I told him I was in the Navy. And you know, first impressions are lasting. He's very, he's very cordial. I mean, you know, he's because he was still, he, and he sit there and spoke to me and, and told me to take care of myself and uh, enjoy myself too, and be careful. And of course, he had to get it back to work. He's a basketball player, so he went back to shooting, getting ready for the game. So that was a nice highlight, nice, nice time. They didn't have, the, didn't have the presence. They didn't have the, the, the technology at the time. So, you know, I didn't, have, I didn't have a selfie phone. I could have took a picture of him and all that. Wish I'd had, but they didn't have it at that time. Uh, do you remember uh, 
uh, seeing any USO events, like whether in person or No, uh, no, not at that time. Uh, there was a USO office, of course, in San Diego. We didn't have one in Long Beach. I don't remember one in Long Beach, but we saw. I've seen the one in, in San Diego. When we, you know, when you go down for the sea trials, you, you can go in there. And like I said, that's where they had all the tickets to a lot of entertainments and stuff like that. Matter of fact, uh, during that time, one of the highlights of being in California at the time, I went to see uh, Johnny Carson, being a shipmate of mine. You know, so they we got free tickets. We that, that it was a. Uh, the military had access to all events. And if you got there first, first come, first serve, you got the tickets. So I, I just had to go see Johnny Carson. Funny show, very funny show. Remember it too. And every time. So that was good. That was that was it. I don't remember who were I remember the time was in you know, the time, the group the time, Morris Day and the time was a very hot group at that time. You know, that was they was very, very big and everything. Chris was already a star, of course. But that was who I remember uh, the most, the clubs. The Mike, Michael Jackson, of course, was you know already mega. And, and you, you see the clothes that they wear back then, you see them today, like it would make you laugh. But that's what we, that's you know, that's what we were wearing then, the, the uh, sleeveless shirts and all that all kind of stuff. So. Okay. All right. Uh, before I transition into uh, shift duties, uh, is there anything else you have to say about? Uh, entertainment or uh, ship or sailor life? Oh, uh, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was great. It, it, was, it was great. I look back at it now, fond memories, you know, it was fun. It, it was very, a lot of fun and yeah, I, I loved it. I, I couldn't, I, I was, I loved it a great deal. I loved it a great deal. It put me where I am today, which we'll get to later on, but uh, great move. One of the best moves I ever made. I think for any young guy, you know, any young person, man or female, yeah, for, you know, uh, military, serve your country, go see the world, which, which I did get to see the world, so I have no complaints. Okay. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, where the ship uh, went shortly after uh, sea trials. Uh, did you ever go to the canal? No, I, I didn't I, I didn't get a chance to go to the canal. Uh, doing all that fun I was having, and I was an athlete, you know, a pretty good athlete at the time. So I was playing a lot of ball during my my rec time, and during the rec time I ended up pulling, uh, you know, messing up my leg, my 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 foot. And uh, when you, when I at that time, you know, it's, it's still the same way. A lot of accommodating ladders on an older ship, very hard to get up and down. I got hurt so bad that. They didn't want me on the ship because I couldn't get up and down the accommodate ladders and I couldn't move around. So they put me on limited duty. And when they put me on limited duty, that's when the ship left to finish the sea trials and they started off on a Westpac. And I was left here, I was left there in Long Beach on limited duty. Okay. And uh, I didn't get, I never, I got the commission, I got to be, you know, I got the plaque and all that being, being a, a member of the ship. But when the ship went on the, the deployment, I was left behind. I went to the sea trials, all that, but then they left me behind. Okay. Yes. Uh, did you ever get to Hawaii with the harbor? Yeah, I, I did later on in life. Yes, I did. Okay, but not quite. Not, not, on, the, not on the ship. Oh, uh, okay. So I, I missed that world. That uh, They called it the world tour. That's what it was called. Oh, yeah. They always called it the world tour. The New Jersey would be the world tour. Okay. That's what they called it. Okay, so you just missed it. Yes. Beirut. Beirut, okay. yes. I remember the Beirut. I remember it well. Matter of fact, um, I was stationed in Philadelphia. Uh, I had uh, I did some time in Long Beach and limited duty, but I was going to be there a little bit long, a lot longer. So they asked me, where did you really want to be stationed at while, you were, while I was healing up? And uh, somehow I picked Philadelphia. So they, shipped, they, sent, me to, they sent me to Philadelphia. The Navy Yard? Yes. Yes, there's the Navy Yard. I worked at the Navy Yard, so that's how I got to be stationed in Philadelphia. Okay. And uh, so I went all the way across country. And then later on, the ship that I was assigned to was actually in Beirut. 
the New Jersey ended up being in Beirut too to relieve them, even though they're two different ships. They were there at the same time. One USS Virginia came back and the New Jersey stayed there. So and that's what happened. So to both the two ships that I were on that were there at just the, at the, one place at the same time. Okay. Uh, where were you when you heard about the uh, bombing at the Marine Barracks? I was on watch that night. By that time, I had struck out. I was a radio man. Okay. And I was, uh, you know, NTC, C, Philadelphia. I was on the, mid, I was on the, the I guess, the, mid, the midnight watch. It was from, uh, we would run the, the watch would be from 11 to 7. And I was on a, I remember it was, I don't know what time it was in Beirut, but it was, uh, it was a Saturday night here. It was a Saturday night here in the United States. And I was on, we was on, we, I was on watch, I'd say at the radio station and all the traffic, all this traffic came in. I mean, two or three in the morning on a Saturday, a bunch of traffic came in. And that's when they, that's when we had found out about the bombing in Beirut. But so I don't know what time it was there, but it was early Saturday morning when we found out. And of course that was, it just woke up everybody. And I remember it was a gloomy day, rainy. When I finally got off from watch, it was gloomy and cloudy and all that. So that's what I, that's my first account of uh, Beirut. And, and I was in Philadelphia. Been a bad moment too. Yes, it was. It was like, yes. I mean, well, like I say, it was just most that time. It's kind of quiet, but when that happened, oh, you know, it. it we were busy the whole time. We were very busy the whole time, uh -huh. uh, dealing with message traffic. Okay, uh, but you did get uh, news about New Jersey being there and then opening fire. Uh, no, not at not at the not the initial time, not at the initial point, but eventually, yeah, they did come up. But what I found out later on is, well, somehow I found out later on was the, when I, the guys from the Virginia, which I ended up going to this ship, told me the New Jersey came and then they start bombing. First, they didn't, they didn't just immediately start bombing. They, it was a rescue mission. And they helped rescue and everything. And after all that was said and done, then they kind of went back out then they started doing their thing off the coast. But, uh, you know, and I didn't really stay in touch with any guys from the New Jersey, even though okay. it, just, it had been less than a year since I've been removed from the ship. Right. So that's how that worked. Right. And just backtrack a little bit. Uh, when you were on New Jersey, did you have a, a general quarters station? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, my general quarters was on one of the turrets. I, I can't remember what turn it was, but it was one of the, it wasn't the 16 inch, of course. It wasn't the 16 inch. Five inch. Yeah, the five inch. Okay. And it was, you know, located downwards down in the, uh, so yeah, the, I remember that. Everybody had one, Every, you know, you know, I was a deck seaman. That's where I was, uh, I was designated one of the turrets. And that's where I would go during GQ. Okay. And spent many, many, many hours there. Many hours there. What were your duties there? Uh, like a handler of the uh, projectiles, okay. you know, projectiles. Of course, it was, uh, you know, that's very, it was a very important thing, you know, okay. handling those projectiles. Okay. So that, that's what I remember. Well, were you there when the guns were actually firing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. How was that like? Well, the guns, they would fire the guns all day long if, and all night sometimes, just fire them. They would fire, you know, the, the six, 10 inch or whatever, it would follow those. And, but I remember the, the 16 inches. And at the time, you know, uh, I, I was, I seen it from the outside and I've seen it from the, I've been inside when they did it. And uh, I remember the 16 inches, the paint would come off. It's very, very, very loud, very loud. And they would do it at night and just go boom, 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 boom. And very loud. It had a, I guess when the powder and all that, it had a, a just, just had a, a smell to it, you know. If you're outside, you couldn't just really, you couldn't just with the naked eye just watch it. You had to turn around, you had to turn your head, and then you, you could look. You couldn't just look at it with the, you know, naked eye like that. But I remember 
very loud, very loud, very loud. Then the other, when they put the other, uh, the modern day stuff on there, very loud too. Matter of fact, a lot of the guys had to have earplugs. If you worked in that 16 inch turn, you, you probably had earplugs or you had the big, uh, the big earplugs. The, yeah, the ear, you had the big earmuffs because it was that loud. Perfect. Yeah, I remember that. So, right. so you did watch the uh, R2D2 spire, right? I, I watched that. Okay. And that, that was loud too. Very, you know, it had a, a piercing loudness to it. You know, it, it, yeah, it was very distinctive sound to it. All right. But I remember the 16 inches. I liked it. We everybody wanted to see to see that or hear that. And every, you know, they they fought off a lot around during those trials. So I can imagine what they did when they got to Beirut. Okay. So, now how about the five-inch guns? You, uh, I I remember those, but it wasn't you know you remember it, but after sixteen inches, that sixteen inches, everything else is kind of small. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It didn't really, you know. But I would be down there when they would uh, load them up and, and send them up and put the protect down, the uh, gunpowder together, and. Uh, push it up and I, I was part of that crew and the gunners was the one who actually put it together that was their job our job was just to help them out transporting it like getting it to one place to another okay. Okay. did you witness any missiles fire did you see any missiles fire yeah. <sighs> yes I did yeah okay. yeah I see some missiles fire yeah or mostly at night mostly at night time yeah very you know but see, that was a big, it was very, uh, you know, like I say, I remember them loading the missiles on. I remember, you know, it was, was kind of hush-hush. Well, I, I thought it was hush-hush. Everybody you would go up to uh, the, uh, the Webb's place and pick up, the, uh, pick up the ammunition and put it on board. I thought it was hush-hush, but it wasn't. I, it used to be in Yorktown on the east side. I, don't, I forgot where it was on the west and, uh on the west side. Uh, in Virginia was on a place called Yorktown. Okay. Uh, supposedly the New Jersey was the first test fire Tomahawk missile. Uh, was it a Tomahawk missile you witnessed fire? Yes. Okay. Yes. You were there for that moment? Well, I was there at a moment. I don't know if it's the first time, but I, they, it wasn't like it was the only time they ever did it, you know, but uh, I've seen all the missiles. I've seen everything fired at least once or twice right. while I was on board. During just the, during the sea trials, I've seen everything. Yeah. I remember those that was mostly at night, but I saw it during the daytime too. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't like people were walking around up on the deck during it. You know, everything was secure when they when they fire off missiles and guns and everything. It ain't like it's like casual. It ain't like a tour. Oh, there's a missile. No, it wasn't like that. Oh, so they did without announcing. Yeah, when they announced it, of course, everything's secure when they did it. You oh, know. Okay. So you, but you can see it, you know, aft. If you were aft, you may be able to see it. You know, you wouldn't be up forward where they doing everything. But you can, you can see it. And like I say at night, a lot of people are still watching. You know, things are still, things are still carrying on. Things are still going on. And uh, I got to see, you know, you, you see a lot. You learn a lot of things. One of the, one of the most it's, I didn't know at the time, un, unread, refueling of ships. So we was, we saw, I saw all that. And we do that at night, you know. But they do it in the day, but I remember us doing it at night when they when the New Jersey took off fuel, you know. Oh, at sea refueling? Yes. Okay. So I remember that too. Yeah. How was that process? Hard, very hard. But they that's what they that's but we train, you know, that's what they train for, you know, that's what they train for. So that's it, it worked out. Of course, you know, all all hands on deck doing that. It's, a, it's it's very you know it's, it's all hands on deck pulling that pulling that uh, nozzle inside of the refill. It's, it's, that's that's a nice it's it's pretty cool to see. It's pretty. Well, I was involved in it. You know, I'm pulling. I'm on that deck trying to get that nozzle in. So okay. Yes. They fired a line from an M14 rifle uh, as like a throw a line to the other ships. Yeah. Well, that was to uh, yeah. They would fire that over the. I guess to pull the, uh, I'm trying to think of what was it called at the time. I guess what we would call, it, it's always the, the male-female thing as far as uh, 
you know, that's far over there. It's like a big ball, a big ball, and you tie it to there, fire the ball over there. Once the ball gets there, you just next team and get the rope and pull pull the hose over. Yes. That's what that was meant. And it's the same way, even it's almost the same way. It's like uh when you ground and uh unwrap, you know, you don't just do fuel, you do you do food, you mail, supplies, everything is done unwrapped. They call it unwrapped. So um, okay. Okay. All right, uh, so let's talk about your transition to the uh Virginia. Uh, so uh, okay. how was that like? Uh well, at the time, like I said, I was at the time of the Beirut thing from New Jersey to the, the, the incident that happened in Beirut. I was at Philadelphia uh, Communication Center. Uh, my time was up as a limited duty, so as a board, I was placed on another, I got orders to another ship, which is USS Virginia. Then I got on, I was, uh, I think I went to the Virginia of January or February of 80, maybe. 84 or something like that. By then, I become an RM3. I was radio in third class. Okay. And uh, I, I joined that crew. They were just coming back from a med cruise. They were coming back from a med cruise, which were in, which was somehow they were in Beirut. So that's they were just coming back. And they went into the yards for overhaul. And that's what that's how that occurred. And that's how I got connected uh, verbally with some of the guys in New Jersey. They told me what the New Jersey had done. Okay. Right. So how did the how was life like on the Virginia compared to New Jersey? It was, I, it was, it was the same. It, it was about the same. Of course, a smaller you know smaller crew and everything, smaller crew, but it was about the same. Uh, yeah. About the same. I remember the uh, you know, two different type of COs. I remember well, I had three COs in so many years. I remember the, the captain from the New Jersey. I remember the captain from the Virginia. So, but the life, ship life is about the same. Like I say, this uh, less people on the USS Virginia. Okay. Well, was it like a little more close knit, or did that not make a difference? Didn't make a difference at all. You were close then with the guys on the New Jersey. You were very close with those guys, you know. Yeah, you, I was very close. Okay. Okay. Now, did you meet any of the CEOs on either ship? No, not not personally, you know. Okay. Uh, but uh, the the one, of course, on the the one on the New Jersey was more. He was, a, you know, I guess it was because of the uh, the ship and the, the political nature or whatever it was. He was, you know, you didn't really see him much at all. You didn't. Now the USS Virginia, smaller ship, captain was more personal. You, you, it was no big deal to see him out and about, you know, walking around. And he didn't always have a marine. You know, he didn't have the marine guards around him. He was very, very personable, very wow. personable person. You know, he would come by. You know, you could talk to him easily. And I remember one. One very good incident, which it would never happen on the New Jersey. They don't really do it often, but uh, during my time on the new USS Virginia, we had a swim call. I don't even know if they do that anymore. A swim call in the middle of the ocean where they drop anchor and you can go swim in the ocean. Now, they ain't like the movies where you guys are jumping, diving off the ship. No, that's not going to happen, but they would do the accommodate ladder. And, and let you go rope out an area and you can swim, you know, swim like that. And that captain did it, USS Virginia. He, he did that. In New Jersey, that would that would never have happened. No, that just wouldn't die. But yeah, it was in the IO, Indian Ocean, when we did that. Indian Ocean? Yes. Very hot. Very hot. I actually, I'm proud I did that. I actually got down on, everybody didn't do it. It was a volunteer if you wanted to do that. And they would rope off a big area and put riflemen out there because you got to remember there's sharks out there. And you would, you know, of course, you swim at your own risk. Yeah, you would go out there, maybe you might be in the water, maybe 30 minutes. And I remember it's a very frightening feeling to see you're in the water and you're looking up at a ship. That's, that's a frightening feeling. 
it, it was frightening just and we were secure you know it was everything was okay but just imagine that the you know chaos or war or you got blown off a ship Oof. Uh, yeah and the ship was on anchor right yes of course of sure. was it close to the shore no no we were right out in the, in the, oh. yeah there wasn't no there was no shore near so down below you it could be as deep as a mile right yeah huh. i mean you can look down, you know, you put the goggles on and we had, you know, it was, it was it's like on TV when you, you know, you can imagine how it is on TV and it's beautiful and clear and you just look down at it and man, now you were a ton of salt on you, you know, you salt it up. You, and like I say, it's very, very hot, very hot. Do you remember which, you know, the captain's name? Uh, I remember one of them, Captain William Fogarty, Fogarty New Jersey. Right? New Jersey. Okay. Uh, for the Virginia Joe Captain, we called him Captain Joe. I'm trying to think what his last name was, Captain. But it was uh, two different personalities, two different men seemed like. But I remember Joe was Captain Joe was for the Virginia. Now we had changed. William Fogarty was for uh, the uh, New Jersey. Very, very uh, seemed to be a rigid kind of guy. Very, wasn't very, wasn't very personable. But okay. that was, you know, but yeah. Joe was. You see, you see Captain Joe at midnight on the mess decks, uh, having a hamburger with one of the guys, just just casually talking, and you know, it would be nothing for him to come up on deck at on the on the night crew watch. And see how things are going, and he'll go back to bed. Go back to bed. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what was your general uh, quarter station on the Virginia? Uh, well, I was in radio then. I was okay. so I was in radio, so I, was, I manned the radio central. Okay, you didn't operate any of the weapons. No, I did not. Okay. No. Now, did, did Virginia have five inch guns? Or? Well, they had standard guns. Of course, they had the they had the tomahawks too. You know, they had the tomahawks thing. Now I remember now, Virginia was a, a you know, one of the first nuclear guided cruisers. Yeah, so we, you know, they had all the latest at that time. At that time, uh, yeah, that they could run for years and you know just run, run, run. They had reactors. Of course, the New Jersey did not. They didn't. They didn't modify it like that. But the Virginia was a, a nuclear. Uh, kit. A nuclear cruiser. All right. You witnessed any of those missiles fired? No, I did not. I don't remember okay. those. No. no. I didn't see. It was nothing. They didn't. By the time I, I ended up getting out of the service, uh, I didn't even make the sea trials with them because they ended up going to Cuba. They went to Gu Guantanamo Bay, and I was already discharged from the All right. service by the end. So did you visit any ports while you're on Virginia? No, well, uh, no, not on the Virginia or not on the Virginia, not either one. Uh, what happened was uh, they would TAD me out to other ships okay. in that in that group. We were Des Rod Eight. Just that was our command. That was our our group. So I got on a belt net, and that was another cruiser, but it wasn't a guided missile crew. I mean, it wasn't a nuclear cruiser. But so I do some I do some sea time there. Went to uh, Nova Scotia, we're up in the up in that area, and everything. We did some Nova Scotia. That was my one time I got some sea time in, and the four four years of active duty I was on in the Navy. My most of my travel become you know I end up joining the Re Naval Reserves. And that's when I got all my travel in okay. Hawaii, uh, Philippines, every all the places, all the ports, and of course. Uh, I was stationed, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, so I was on the East Coast. So I got to do a lot of Europe, oh, even in the Navy. So that's why I did a lot of travel. So ironically, you didn't see a whole lot of ports right on the ships, right? Yeah. Um, and I saw them out there. Oh, I saw a lot of, quite a few of them in the reserves. Because even though, you know, we traveled and everything, but I didn't see it by my, I didn't see a lot of it on my active duty part. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, uh, what year did you uh, start the reserves? Start, uh, got out in '86. I think I really started in '80s. Probably, I guess I really started the reserve '88. That's yeah. when I started, okay. and I continued on until 2004, something like that. Uh, 
So, so were you still a radio man back then? Uh, it started off with radio man, but then as time went on, it become uh, IT. They're ITs now. It's just those, and then I don't even know if they have ITs now because of technology and everything. Every you know, they, they don't need radio man because they're, they're they're not doing circuits. Everything is, uh, you know, is, everything is PC. Okay. So everybody, everybody's a radio man. Everybody has a PC in the Navy. Uh, everybody can communicate. You know, it's just different classifications, of course. It's just transmitted. There's no need for uh, a radio man no more. Yeah. They don't do any circuits on crypto and things of that nature like that. Okay. Uh, any uh, ports that stand out for you while you're in the reserves? Oh, well, of course, you know, Port Pearl Harbor was nice. You know, yeah. well, history and everything and, you know, being in the Navy, I just, I can't imagine. I mean, I wasn't there to, during the, the day, but kind of put yourself there a little bit and being in that water and all that. That was a good one. And uh, Halifax, Canada, Nova Scotia. Very good. I mean, I liked it. I just, yeah, it was a very nice sport. It was kind of like a, one of the the things you see in the movies, you know, the guys. It's just a good thing. It's, it's for a young man, it's fun. It's very fun. Oh, young woman, anybody is very fun. And you man in the rails and you, people are looking at you and, you know, I got to do that. Play the, uh, the movie part, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's very fun. Were you there in the summertime? No, I was there in the fall. Okay. Fall. But it was still nice, though. Mm -hmm. Now, Pearl Harbor, I was there in the summertime. with the Pearl Harbor in the summertime. But I wasn't on a ship. But of course, I wasn't on a ship. So my only real good ship was, I guess, uh, Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia. And that was a USS Belknap. Belknap. I don't even know if that's it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not even in condition no more. All right. Yeah, so that was fun. Yeah, and that ship was a... Uh... That was a cruiser, okay. but it wasn't a nuclear cruiser. I don't believe it was a... a it was a cruiser, though. Okay. So, you know, I'm, you know, I didn't know how you... Of course, you know how it's, you can tell the difference between a nuclear ship and a, a, a diesel ship. It's, it's easy, you know. It's, uh, the chain, if it's black, the, the, the stacks are black, it's a, it's a gasoline made. If it's all gray, it's nuclear. Yeah, yeah. So that's how you knew. Yeah, yes. Right. Okay, um, let's just backtrack to your uh, duties uh, from radio men to IT. Uh, okay. Anything you can describe about? Uh, from radio men to IT, well, like I say, I'll, uh, radio man was, you actually got traffic. I mean, you had all the teletypes, you had uh, the, 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 the crypto, <laughs> you actually did, you know, the circuits, uh, you had uh, tech control, uh, you had guys that set up the circuits, you had guys monitor the circuits, you had guys do the traffic, you had all those things at radio, you know, you had a, uh, yes, you, you, uh, you cut messages. Uh, it, we would teletype, tele, teletype uh, tape, you know, all that. Morse code, that's the radio man. That's the real radio man. But all that, as I got in the reserves, that all went away, you know, that I knew of. It all went away. Crypto, like I say, noon, noonday, all those things changed. Now everybody's a radio man. Like I said, they, you have a whole staff of radio men. You might have, depending on what ship you are, what, what kind of ship you're on, you have a whole bunch of radio men. Now, they're, they're, they're not even a radio men. They're radio men anymore. Like I say, I, I see in IT, information technology, information tech. You might go in, you have to fix the laptop. That's that's what you do now. That's what you do. used to be an IC man, but now that's what ITs do. Okay. All right, so you left the Navy in 2004, was it? Yeah, the reserves. I, yeah, I, yeah, I end up yeah, being retired out. Okay. All right. Um, how's the pro how's your process of um, leaving the navy? Uh, well, you, you did. I, I did the time and everything, and I enjoyed it. Okay. I enjoyed it, but you know, it's a different navy. You know, uh, it's it's the people in the navy now. It's their time. You know, it's their time. They would think I would be old. I'm, I would. I would be old, you know. 
I don't even know if I would I could relate to the Navy it is today because it's different. It's a lot different. I see. Um, we're just about uh, heading to the uh, closing questions. Uh, so, uh, how was transitioning to the civilian life? Uh, was it easy? Easy? Not too bad. It was, it was easy. It was very okay. easy. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a currently I'm a uh, I'm a uh, United States well U.S. Postal Service. I work for the post office. Okay. My letter carrier. All right. So a lot of the, a lot of your coworkers are uh, former veterans or veterans, and they're, they're veterans. So and uh, you know throughout the day we swap stories and places we've been. Uh, station, places we stationed at and all that. So, all right. from one branch to another. Okay. And uh, how the Navy impact your life? Oh, uh, greatly to me. Greatly, yeah. It gave me. It was it taught me things. I got to see places. I met a lot of people that I probably never would have met. A lot of experiences I never probably would have had. So it was great. Uh, I I would advise anybody, you know, especially young a young person, you know, give yeah, serve your country, serve your country. Okay. It's a great country. All right. Yeah, and I got to see that in my travels during the service. Great country. Oh yes, indeed. And this is your first time back to the ship. Yes, right? it is. Right. Yes. How's it like being back? Good. It's good. I mean, I'm just I remember so much of it. You know, started just coming back and. I've been I've been wanting to come back for a long time. I've been wanting to come and see it for a long, long time. So here I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you do have a photograph of yourself. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. I brought it with me. You know. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. Yes. That's that's a young, uh, young Lee Bailey. Okay. <laughs> And you can see the hat and uh, the name and all that. So, oh, yeah. a long time ago, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, it didn't look so. And then, uh, I don't know what you looked like back then. Yeah, well, hopefully, you know, I don't. I'd like to think uh, the, the the years haven't been, you know, they haven't been terrible. Um, you know, picked up some weight, of course, and this and that, the hair and all that. It, uh, I'm 18, 19 on this picture. I'm 56 now, so okay. you know, do the math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I enjoy it anyway. I, I do enjoy it, and uh, yeah, that, once upon a time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's a uh, closing question. Yes, sir. Uh, so, as you're aware, uh, this interview, like many of the interviews before you, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be submitted to. The Library of Congress, uh, New Jersey State Library, potentially maybe other institutions, uh, where they'll be available to writers, researchers, students, reporters, historians, and anybody who may be uh, picking these up, uh, listening to this, watching this, to learn about uh, history, especially American and military history. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to leave a message to them? Some legacy? Uh I, I, I will hope someone will see this. I will, I will hope someone will see it, and, and uh, uh, I would like, yeah, in my own family. I would like them to see it. You know, I would, I would enjoy them to see this. My, my my grandkids. I guess that's why I'm doing it. Maybe you know, let the next day uh, after I'm, you know, when I'm gone from here, they this is this could live on. This someone will know this. Someone will see this, and. Uh, See how much joy I had in making it and just talking about it and everything. So, yeah, I hope I hope people do see it, and I would like to see someone else's other than my own. So, I'm looking forward to it. I, I enjoy this uh, memory lane very much, very much. I don't know if I have the answer, but that was that's how I feel about it, though. Okay. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'd like to say. Okay. Um, now, is there anything that uh, I didn't say that uh, you? Would like to say? Uh, no, I think it's uh, yeah, yeah. I, you asked that's all the questions. Uh, I didn't know if I had enough information for you, but um, I hope I did. I hope it, I hope it's uh, I hope I had enough information that someone would like to listen to it. Maybe you know, like to listen to it. But no, we can't really do uh, 
like I say, the security, you know, I had a security. Uh, I don't even know if they do that anymore in the Navy as far as security. So I don't know if I was talking about things I shouldn't have been talking about, like the, the missiles and all those things. So well, that's basic information. You can oh. actually look it up in the internet. Oh, okay. Oh, another thing, too. I did see, uh, actually, I, I went to the place. Uh, I actually went to the place where uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, the, the minister of Russia at the time, Gorbachev. Is it Gorbachev? Um, Gorbachev. Yeah, they, we, uh, we went to that place where they had the meeting at. Okay. And way in the background is my friend, Ken, uh, Kenan, kid from Atlanta, Georgia, my buddy, my Navy buddy, and my, my other buddy, just our personal football buddy. We were in the reserves together, so he was there with me. He's not on this. He might not be able to be on this tape, but he's he's here. So he's, he's here in the back. He's in the oh, back. Okay. So that was, yeah, me and him was in Iceland at that time. And uh, so that was, that's, yeah. Shout out to somebody. He's waiting on me right now. <laughs> Uh, I guess we can conclude this interview. Uh, so, once again, uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, thank you for your service, taking the time to join us, and contributing to uh, uh, the history of the ship, as well as the history of the United States and the military. And, uh, yeah, welcome back to the Battleship of Jersey, uh, your former home, and what is possibly the greatest battleship that was ever built. Uh, so, my name is Hugh Sung, the uh, assistant of the oral history program here at the Battleship New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, and today is Thursday, September 6th of 2018, and our interview guest was uh, Lee Bailey. This recording and any transcripts, abstracts, or indexes made from recordings will be stored at the Oral History uh, Department here at the Battleship New Jersey, as well as the Library of Congress Veterans History Project, New Jersey State Library Systems as well. And all these recordings are made available to writers, researchers, teachers, and historians. And once again, my name is Hugh Sung, signing off. Signing off.